sincerely hope so. I truly do. Hello, friends, and welcome in to this, the 126th edition of Fusebox, tenderly entitled Puff and Buzzle, and uh, I am your protesting silently in the empty bathtub whilst wearing a hazmat suit host, Mark Rose. Thank you for pushing play on this edition of the program, and uh, over there, the undisputed king of compressor saturation, Milt Kane, everybody. Oh, thank you kindly. Man, man, they're wild times out there, man. <laughs> wild indeed, Mr. Keynes, and we shall be discussing that, them, those things momentarily, but I just wanted to say at the top of the show here that uh, we... We were rather delirious uh, with uh, delight on the emails we had come to us concerning the last program, number 125, called uh, He Is Us, where we uh, took a slight, eh, slight detour. Well, you might even say we took the scenic route. Yes, yes, one could. I won't, <laughs> but one could. <laughs> No, no, we did indeed divert a bit from our uh, normal chattering on this show to um, highlight what was and uh, still very much is an issue. This whole domestic terrorism, gun control, uh, basic intolerance towards diversity in any form these days. Yeah, I'm glad folks dug it. Wasn't the uh, cheeriest show we've ever done, but uh, needed to be said. Yeah. And, and as, I, as I mentioned on that program, sometimes you just have a uh, moral obligation to say something, you know, add a voice to the throng, which appears to be growing daily out there. But uh, we had a lot of remarkably grand response to that one, and I'm uh, grateful that folks took the ride with us and appreciated where we were going as it turns out to... On that day, the uh, show release day. Yep, again. Yep, again. On that very Wednesday, uh, another shooting in Pennsylvania this time occurred. An eight-hour standoff uh, with police and a, a, a gunman holed up in a house who apparently was... Um, what was it? What was he doing? Yeah, well, he was uh, being served with a warrant for his arrest, uh, stemming from what I think they said was a drug deal. But oh, yeah, yeah. It went south fast, and he started opening fire on the officers pretty much right away. Well, and, and I know someone was quoted as saying it was like they heard a hundred rounds fired in, in like a second or two, something like that. Yeah, and you know, this guy again had a damn arsenal in his house there. And was ready to take over a small country by the sound of it. Six officers shot, but uh, none seriously, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was the last bit I heard, yeah. Unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. Well, I, I'm, I'm glad there were no fatalities in that one, for sure. We don't need another list of casualties. That's just ridiculous. And along those lines, friends, I think uh, we need to do a little... Fusebox shout out regarding this next topic. Uh, Maestro, if you would please. So, as uh, many of you may know, uh, our fair city of Portland, that's Oregon, not Maine, was uh, the site of what could have been one hell of a riot this past weekend as uh, members of the Proud Boys and uh, several other extremist right-wing groups were scheduled to uh, protest here, and right alongside of them was the uh, so-called extremist left, represented by Antifa, an anti-fascist group which has a base here in the city and uh, 
has been here for 35, 40 years, actually. I don't know if many people know that. But uh, a past, uh, albeit smaller, protest with these two groups happened back in June and uh, resulted in some pretty violent uh, outbursts and uh, therefore creating a need for law enforcement to take control of the situation there. This gathering, the scheduled one, was uh, quite a bit bigger and uh, for both folks, as it turns out. And uh, several people not related to uh, either extreme were trying to kind of diffuse the rage with humor, <laughs> uh, dressing up like bananas and also the classic emoji resembling a pile of feces. <laughs> so uh, what are they saying exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I think it has to do with hygiene or something. I don't know. Well, anyway, this event had the city, as you might imagine, uh, a bit at odds. Uh, as with those two groups coming together at the same time, could, of course, spell disaster for many folks and businesses in the area and all that stuff. So, uh, our mayor here, Ted Wheeler, kept a remarkably cool head uh, throughout this thing, despite being goaded by the orange guy at one point. And uh, the law enforcement folks remained remarkably zen <laughs> through this entire affair. Well, for, for one thing, they kept those two groups about a, a mile apart from each other and had about a thousand or more police to lend a hand. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, from not only Portland, as I understand, but adjoining cities as well. They, uh, they all kind of jumped in here. And uh, despite what uh, Orange Guy tweeted about hoping our mayor would, quote, do his job properly. Everything was quite smooth, and uh, only about a baker's dozen uh, of arrests were reported. You know, I, I, I was just telling folks to stay home, you know? Could have gone sideways at any point, man. Well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Seriously, the energy out there right now is still quite uh, flammable, so to speak. And uh, this really could have been a violent mess, but the uh, city stepped up and corked this thing before it had a chance to become something other than uh, a protest, which uh, we're grateful it remained for both groups. Now, of course, you've got to have the guy from the Proud Boys saying that uh, they're going to continue to come here and force the city to spend millions of dollars to uh, play referee to this, quote, protest until the mayor acknowledges that uh, Antifa is a domestic terrorist group. Yeah, and, y and you can see the problem here, right? The cost not only to the city, but the businesses on whatever stretch they uh, designate for this thing. Sure. Could really, over time, kind of cripple an area. I mean, who is this helping? Yeah. Frankly, man, you know, I don't give a shit what kind of harebrained cause you're into, but the second your cause physically injures somebody, all bets are off, just as plain as that. Well, I gotta say, to me, it just seems like a form of extortion. It really does. Uh, by by the way, this uh, Proud Boys group was from our favorite place in the world, Florida. <laughs> right. Rallied by some uh, ex-Infowars uh, talk show host by the name of, uh, what, Ed Biggs or something? It's not Alex Jones. He, he may have been interested in this, but uh, wasn't here. Well, you know what? To echo the leader of our uh, free world... They can just go back to where they came from. <laughs> yeah, Miami. <laughs> <laughs> well, all in all, uh, fairly uneventful, and uh, g we're all very grateful for that. So a Fusebox shout-out to uh, Mayor Ted Wheeler and all the folks in law enforcement who uh, help keep it that way. <laughs> Yes, sir. And uh, when we return, a couple of updates and a massive move to rename a street in Manhattan. You're going to love this one. From PR News in Washington, I'm spying for the Kremlin today. Prosecutors had warned that I'm acting as an agent of the Russian government. 
in the Carolinas as well as Virginia. We'll Authorities began the mandatory evacuations with PR News in Chapel Hill. The Trump is shutting down in Washington. The State Department says black Trump will do what it can to prevent that. Well, I, 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 Trump says PR News dead, dead to us. The State Department says that I, 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 in Washington. Police say President Trump parked on the wrong floor of the apartment complex's parking garage. Trump told officers who responded to the shooting that about a million people died of a fight over a biotech patent. The official said today, PR News is the foundation of a multi-dollar industry. PR News is derived from higher organisms, including human bacteria. Scientists at the Broad Institute at MIT and Harvard were awarded major patents for using this technology in PR News. The Trump has PR News that in the span of only an hour today intensified from a Category 2 to a Category 4 without Kim Jong-un's permission. Do you believe in fairy tales? The Fusebox Show dot com. So a quick update to a story uh, we'll probably be following for the next two decades. Really? Uh, <laughs> I better pack a lunch then. <laughs> Maybe a couple. Everyone is aware by now that Jeffrey Epstein, the uh, convicted sex offender and alleged sex trafficker, was uh, reported as having hanged himself in his jail cell a few days back, just hours before uh, documents were being released and uh, more indictments were being filed by uh, those folks affected by this guy. And two days after, he changed his will, they say. What's that? Yeah, came out a few days ago. And uh, his brother is still the only uh, heir named. Oh, yeah. Well, his uh, his uh, brother, uh, Mark, is the next guy in the uh, sights of the legal eagles there. Or should be. What the hell is taking so long to file this indictment? Do you realize that it took over a week to get the F- well over a week to get the FBI out to his island over there in the Caribbean? You know, I was just having this discussion yesterday. When a plane goes down somewhere, yeah, the the FAA are on that site like immediately. Now the process of investigation, you know, figuring out what went sideways, that that could take years in some cases. Right. But responding to the incident, boom, they are there. Yeah. Yeah. Now this guy's homes and islands and all that crap he had that that should have been raided the second he was nabbed. Well, uh, I think the. Uh townhouse on uh, 71st or wherever it is that uh, actually was searched uh prior but uh nothing else has uh, either been seized or investigated prior to that point that i you know or to this recent thing that i'm aware of sure because we want plenty of time to rearrange the facts and make sure some of these co-conspirators get another free pass well as was uh, mentioned in the top of the show do you know that uh, virtually no one <laughs> believes this autopsy report that he hanged himself? No, I don't buy it. But I also don't buy the stories of some of these fruitcakes that, uh, like the Clintons or, or even Trump or, hell, Mary Poppins, you know, floated in and whacked him. Well, a teaspoon of sugar does make the medicine go down. <laughs> you know? No, I hear you. I, I, I don't know who did it, but uh, it, uh, it's clearly, it's clearly become vague. And we know what happens when it becomes vague, friends. It starts to become translucent, then invisible, and soon it becomes Jeffrey who? Never heard of him. You must be mistaken. Nah, it never happened. I think we've finally all taken the red pill with this one, friends. This is not what it seems at all. And luckily, there are (laughs) evidently scores of folks that are as curious as uh, you or I to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, but just as many who will claim like giant mantis aliens came down and wet. Wait a minute. Yeah, see, that's kind of your thing. No, no, that's not right. 
Well, speaking of alien races and things that go clunk, zip, and thrang, here's an interesting bit of news regarding the Marvel Universe you may not have followed and uh, may never follow after this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, many may know the name Art Spiegelman, and uh, if you don't, let me preface this by saying that uh, Mr. Spiegelman is, uh, as we hip musicians say, he's a cat. Uh, His Pulitzer Prize-winning graphic novel, Mouse, M-A-U-S, really is a a must-read and a totally engrossing tale of uh, the Holocaust as seen through the eyes of mice. And uh, the Nazis are portrayed as uh, cats in this story. This actually began life as a, a strip in an underground comic called Funny Aminals, edited by the uh, great Justin Green, uh, an edition of which, I must say, I proudly have, lurking in the collection of uh, underground comics up there. Mm-hmm. But Mr. Spiegelman is a scholar and uh, an occasional uh, lecturer on uh, the value of comic art and communication and has uh, done work for the New Yorker and uh, other mainstream publications, uh, as well as back in the 1980s, friends. It was he, yes, who was physically responsible for one of my favorite trading card series from the uh, folks at Tops, The Garbage Pail Kids. Remember them? Eh? Yeah. Well, they also did some uh, assorted wacky packages earlier in his career, And uh, from day one, he has been an outspoken supporter of the First Amendment. And uh, that actually (laughs) was put to the test and uh, I say proved rather dramatically in uh, 2015 because uh, six writers had refused to sit on a panel at the uh, Penn American Center. And they were refusing to do that in protest of the planned Freedom of Expression Courage Award that was going to be given to the satirical French uh, periodical Charlie Hebdo. And this was all following the shooting at its headquarters earlier in that year. Spiegelman agreed to be one of the replacement hosts, along with uh, other folks like writer Neil Gaiman, who was also there. Now, you're probably remembering that the the aforementioned uh, French magazine there had featured a picture of Mohammed in a cartoon and... uh, That, of course, set off a series of uh, tragic events there at the magazine. It wasn't good at all. And uh, later, Spiegelman uh, retracted a cover he had submitted to a Neil Gaiman-edited issue of New Statesman entitled Saying the Unsayable when the management declined to print his strip. Now, the strip was titled Notes from a First Amendment Fundamentalist, and uh, it also depicted Muhammad. And Spiegelman believed the rejection was censorship, and uh, there were many who also (laughs) agreed with that, though the magazine said it uh, never intended to run the cartoon. Well, it kind of draws a line in the sand there, doesn't it? I saw what you did there. Well, I just wanted you to know I'm still here. You know, like I didn't go out and wash the car or something. (laughs) Appreciate that. (laughs) Really. Uh, so, So, suffice to say, that uh, Spiegelman has a uh, colorful history and uh, is a very learned chap. So the folks at Marvel Publications decided to publish this uh, rather gloriously festooned edition called Marvel, the Golden Age, 1939 to 1949, in which, of course, uh, you have to imagine, Captain America figures prominently in that book. Yeah, cracking the heads of Nazis, no doubt. (laughs) Precisely, Mr. Gates. So uh, Marvel asked Spiegelman to write the uh, introduction slash forward to this book, which was actually an extremely brilliant idea on their part. Who would be better than this chap who uh, has a rather intimate knowledge and experience of that time period? And uh, did I mention the Pulitzer Prize? You don't say. Yes, I did say. And so, Mr. Spiegelman writes this rather brilliant foreword to the book, as you might imagine, and uh, it contains this line. In today's all-too-real world, Captain America's most nefarious villain, the Red Skull, 
is alive on screen. And an orange skull haunts America. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So the uh, Folio Society, which was actually handling the publishing of this edition for Marvel, asked Spiegelman to remove that line, claiming Marvel was trying to be apolitical in this particular thing. <laughs> so Spiegelman pulled the whole forward. However, you can read that essay now in its entirety on uh, the UK's Guardian webpage. Apolitical? Well, yeah. I mean, can we just back up a minute here? I mean, over a third of these issues included in this volume are indeed featuring Captain America, just like you said, bashing Nazis. Uh, hell, even the Japanese get a whooping uh, during these days, right? So we're not talking about apolitical leanings here, are we? No, we're not. No. So let's go ahead and pull up the squishy bit here, okay? Let's just pull this and let's see what's underneath, shall we? Let's just, yeah. Oh, what's that right there? Oh, it's Isaac Ike Perlmutter. And as Art writes here, quoting, an unofficial and influential advisor and a member of the president's elite Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Florida. And Perlmutter and his wife have each recently donated $360,000, the maximum allowed, to the Orange Skulls Trump Victory Joint Fundraising Committee for 2020. End quote. So clearly... No political affiliation there at all. <laughs> the orange skull. I <laughs> love that. Is he a fat guy? Yes, Lionel, I believe he is. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, a, that's a great image. Yeah? Yeah? So again, quasi-hidden agendas masquerading as neutrality. Once more and another time once again. Well, you know, I'm not into the whole comics thing, but uh, if I was, I'd be rethinking my choice of brands right now. Certainly a consideration, Mr. Keynes. And uh, like I said, if I can uh, locate that essay, I will uh, put a link in the show notes there to the full deal as uh, graciously printed by The Guardian. So come on, man. I, I, I'm like sitting on pins and needles here, man. What What's the, the, the street change thing? <laughs> You know, that's kind of interesting because I'm sitting on Pez and Neko's for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, anyway. Uh, oh, I, well, this, this is choice. And uh, thanks to our dear friend and uh, frequent uh, contributor to Fusebox, Jody Lormer, for sending me this bit. So it appears, friends, that there is a petition floating around right now in, uh, and I guess the state of New York, only? Not sure. But uh, it would make sense. Uh, there is a move here to get a section of Fifth Avenue renamed after former President Barack Obama. Really? Sounds like a no-brainer to me. Well, it's a bit more ironic than that, Mr. Keynes. <laughs> you see, the a stretch of Fifth Avenue they propose to rename includes Trump Tower among the edifices on that pavement. <laughs> <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> oh, seriously, seriously. They have about 80,000 signatures so far. So if this goes through, Trump Tower's address will now be 725 President Barack Obama Avenue. <laughs> oh, please grant us this, oh, holy street gods. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, the irony is, of course... Delicious. Not sure if this is up for a, a, a general vote, though. Pro probably not. Hell, they'd have so many names that it would have to be continued on a separate petition. <laughs> Join the expectant crowd growing now. Oh, he, he'd probably move the building. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Hard to do from prison, though. Sorry. Sorry. That was rude and insensitive. I apologize. I forgot the piano. I think that 
that just about covers it. Me too. And it certainly covers this edition of Fusebox, friends, as uh, we take our back issues of Leather Nun and Oat Willie and crawl back down the dryer vent where we belong. But thanks to our contributors, Levi Buchanan, the amazing, as always, Frenende Nende Lee Murr, and a tip of the hat to the uh, always wondrous Mike LeBron on this particular program. And uh, thanks as well to the uh, dictator of dials over there, Milt Keynes, for technical assistance. A pleasure as always. Thanks be to you, friends, for pushing play on this edition of Fusebox. We know, we (laughs) know, you have a lot of choices out there, like 600,000 plus, at least. So we uh, very much appreciate you being here and... uh, If you have not done so, please feel free to subscribe and perhaps maybe, but also like us or give us a thumbs or a star or whatever you encounter there in the little podcast box. We appreciate that so very, very much. And I have been your deep diving into a vat of orange crush host, Mark Rose, saying until our next Cartoon. Fuse.